chapter. Numbers chapter 6. Say it again. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Hallelujah. He's welcome in this place. Welcome. Say, you're welcome in my life. Adjust anything that needs adjusting. Correct anything that needs correcting. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. He's our friend. He's our helper. The Holy Spirit, he's the only person that you ever have to please. And if you please him, life is good. Hallelujah. Life is real good, as a matter of fact. Hallelujah. Pleasing him, learning to love him, accessing um, uh, or really just being more conscious and aware of him. After Sunday's message, I, I, I was uh, I was really thought I was going to kind of was several directions praying about tonight, but after Sunday, I just couldn't really get away from the presence of God. We talked about created for his presence Sunday morning. If you weren't here, uh, maybe go on the YouTube page or go on the website and watch that message. Uh, we just had such a sweet presence in here. I actually had, had one fellow that comes to the church, young, young guy that uh, I saw him in the gym Monday morning first thing or Monday afternoon, whichever it was, and he said, man, he said, yeah, he said, I, I actually had some tears. I had, man, I had tears. And he said, it felt like God just cracked my heart open. I said, well, that's, man, when the presence of God just is in the house, I mean, he can, he can do stuff like that and in a moment, you know, but, but there was really, and then several people have commented that it was just a sweet presence in the Lord, uh, uh, of the presence of the Lord in, in the place. And, and th- that's what we wanted. You know, I was f- picking that up early in the morning, Sunday morning, just said, Lord, um, What's on me right now? I just want that to be on the people. Uh, and so I really, um, and this week, uh, just really couldn't get away from re- just really talking a little bit more about the presence of God tonight. And what a privilege that we have. Wow. To, uh, to uh, you know, what, what was actually uh, unaccessible uh, in the Old Testament, you know, being able to go into the most holy place. Come on, the most holy place. Uh, one guy went in once a year on the Day of Atonement. The high priest, you know, and uh, he went in, and, and now because of Jesus shed blood, that veil was torn, and we actually have literal access. We can come boldly before God. We can, like we've mentioned, Hebrews eleven six says, without faith. Uh, so, so that gives you, that tells you how we do it. We just choose to, whether you want to close your eyes or leave them open and say, Lord, I believe you are, and you begin to focus on him. And... Uh, so, uh, really, uh, there, there's several things. The Bible, I, I just thought I would remind you, maybe you know some of these things, but, but I want to talk about the face of the Lord uh, just a minute tonight. Um, we'll just see how far we go, uh, looking at some things, thinking about some things today, and just the presence of God. I, I like His presence. How many of you love the presence of the Lord? Man, I like it, especially like on Sunday morning, man. <laughs> I was just, man, I'm still, I, I just, when I, 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 get, I get in worship and in the mornings, you know, or when I'm just, uh, and I just, I start crying, man. I don't know. I just, I don't know if, it, I don't know if it was Israel. I don't know if it's just God just doing something new. It's fresh, but, um, but just the, the uh, more, maybe just more aware of Him, His goodness. He's just good. He's so good. And really, the more I think that's one of the things that we develop is um, the more we know God, the more you 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 develop how, uh, awareness of how good He is. He's just He's just good. He's so good. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, if you do some tasting, you'll decide, I got to have more. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, it's like having a, I mean, it's better than a good meal. It's better than a good vacation. It's, it's just you get some of God, and you say, man, I got to have more. And, uh, and, and so God, um, but, but his face and his presence, uh, very similar things. Um, so I, I just have such a desire for him. Um, and and, and I, I was explaining it. I was uh, I was explaining to somebody this week, it's like, you know, I'm like, man, I don't want it to go away. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm guarding this thing. I'm guarding it. You know, I'm like, man, you, you can imagine what, like, I, I, a little bit more understand when David said, Lord, don't, don't take the Holy Spirit away from me, because you're just like, man, I'm just, I'm just soaking this up. I'm enjoying this. I'm, I'm, it's like he's just so real, so close, and uh, man, just whatever. So you're, you're guarding that, you're, and, and uh, so I'm just, uh, but I want us to encounter uh, him more. I think that's what that's what that's what America needs. That's what that's revival. I mean, when you're encountering Him, uh, and then you know when He moves and the Spirit's falling, and man, when God's presence shows up, stuff happens, and it might and it might be even crazy. It might it could be everything from miracles to to runaways. I don't know. It, it, people just feeling like they got their heart cracked open. 
<laughs> it's like, whatever that means, you know, my heart. But it's, it just, literally, it's a softening. It's like the, the rain, uh, the rain of God's presence. It's like rain. It saturates the ground and moistens it up, gets it soft, ready for, for what God wants to do and saturates us. So uh, look in Numbers again. Numbers chapter 6. I, I had it, and then I, in my Bible, I got it on my iPad. But um, Numbers chapter 6, verse 23 it says, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, uh, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee, keep thee. Uh, now notice verse 25. This is what we want to look at. The, verse, the Lord make his face shine upon thee. Now notice that. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Well, uh, we know an element of that has already taken place because... John chapter 1 says, of his fullness we have all received and grace upon grace. So God is gracious, um, but, but there's always more. There's more graciousness, there's more goodness. Uh, but, but notice the connection. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance. Now notice, again, his countenance. The Lord lift up his countenance. Again, the countenance has to do with the face, an expression uh, God's pleased with us. That would be a good countenance, you know, because, uh, and then, and notice, and give you peace. Now, notice that word peace there. So notice the benefits of his face shining upon us. So, so again, just, just maybe if you're making notes, just put a little note, pres- his presence beside face, because the face of God is the presence of God. We won't take time to go over there, but in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 5, when God brought the children of Israel before him, he said, uh, he, he appeared to him in a fire, and that's when he said, I spoke to you uh, out of the fire, and you didn't see a form or an image, and he said, because I know you're a rebellious people, I doubt. he said, you, you'll end up making something like what you saw, and you'll worship it. But then in the fifth chapter, he says, when I spoke to you, uh, he said, I spoke to you face to face, all right? So, so, again, you have to recognize when God's talking about his countenance, his face, uh, it's also his presence, and I'll give you some other scripture about it, but, but when his face is, is I, I, I think of it more like we're looking at him, he's looking at us, he can shine on us. If you're not really focusing on him, if you're not attuned to him, if you're not um, pursuing him, because that's what we're talking about as well. Because he told, remember David said, Lord, you said seek my face. Your, your face I, I did seek. I did seek your face. So what does that mean to seek his face? Well, that's his presence. Seeking him, coming into his presence. With singing. Into his course of praise. So the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So the word, that word peace there, that, that word peace is pregnant with everything good. Peace. That is the shalom, everything good. It's soundness, it's wholeness, it's prosperity. And so if you understand, when God called Israelites and when he chose them as a people and called them out, Israel was to be a people that was set apart by God's face shining on them. I mean, it was, it was, he, was gonna, he was showing favor upon them. That's what I call this message tonight, the, the, the favor of his face. How many are interested in favor? I mean, when you have favor, there's things that you get that you can't get any other way. The favor of his face, of his presence. So his presence, I mean, his presence is so important. Moses even said, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, I'm not going, we're not going, we're not going anywhere without your presence. We've got, we, we, we've got to have it. Listen to the message translation, because I really like the message translation. It says, God bless you, keep you, God smile on you. Now, see, his face smiling on you and gift you, smiling on you. I like that. I want God smiling on me. I don't want him frowning on me. <laughs> I want him smiling on me and gift you. And I like this. God look you full in the face and make you prosper. I love that. Now, think about that. If, if he's looking at us, I, if we're looking at each other, man, face to face, you can't see poverty. You can't see lack. You, you, won't, you can't see sickness because God's every, total opposite of that. 
When you choose to focus on him and just get so close to him and you're looking face to face with him, you'll see success, you'll see victory, you'll see, you don't see defeat, you see in his presence, even in the, pre- he prepares the table in the presence of the enemies. So no matter if the enemy shows up, you got victory. Look you full in the face. Look you full in, I mean, it's like you ever look, take your kid and you just grab him by the chin and you just, and you, you getting some attention right here. <laughs> You know, face to face, all right? Verse 27 says, in so doing, they will place my name on the people of Israel, and I will confirm it by blessing them. So, you know, said all that to when, when this is not something that was just a blessing, but, but it was for the, the people to know God to, uh, or you could say it like this, God wants us to experience him. In other words, if he's gifting if he's uh, looking us full in the face, causing us to prosper, if, if we're taking time with him, it's going to change us. We're going to experience him. And, and he wants us to encounter him regularly. We're wired for it. We're made for it. It's like I was talking Sunday morning. We're created for his presence. We're designed to not go a moment without it. I mean, that we just live. In him, we live and move and have our being, and we're consciously aware of it. And what we fell short of, Jesus has restored. My, but Romans says, all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. Well, Jesus restored that and the glory of his presence. We have access we, to receive and to receive the love of God and to walk in it. And, uh, and I think, you know, where we're at, Christianity has kind of become familiar with a God that it doesn't know. Religion. It's like anything, religion can kind of try to explain some things and talk about some things, but, but even, even people that don't understand fellowship, people that don't understand God's called us to fellowship, we talked about that a few weeks ago, we're called to fellowship, and uh, specifically with the Holy Spirit, He's the agent that God uses to minister to us and show us things and show us, you know, be in our life, and, but um, we have to, there's a... If you're going to know God, experience Him, there's a price to pay. Not just, I'm not just talking about just for ministry. I'm just talking about for any Christian, any believer. There's a price to pay. And, um, and the degree of whatever that requires for the individual, it could be different for different people, but whatever uh, really the level of yieldedness is going to determine, I mean, I mean, there's some people that got more favor than others. Well, it, it, and, it's be, and, it's, and it may be because there's more faith. It could be there's more yieldedness. There's more willingness. I mean, why some people, you know, maybe have a little hard time. Well, God's no respecter of persons, but, but he is going to honor faith. He's going to honor yielding. He's going to honor those that take time with him and show them things. And where somebody else might not take time and sacrifice involved. You understand what I'm saying? And so... What happens is people try to live Christian life by principle and not have fellowship. In other words, you can, you can, oh, this is, oh, do this, do this. It's not about, the Christian life is not about formula. Sometimes faith is kind of, okay, step one, step two, step, and and there's nothing wrong with that, but, but you got to have fellowship. People try to live this life and, and they don't have, they don't have fellowship. They don't have encounters. And so the danger that happens is, is we reduce experience to formula in other words, somebody else's experience. How I many know oh, you have to have your own experience with God? Knowing God. It's like any child. My kids, you know, I can only show them. I can only help them. I can only say, hey, look, this is what God wants. But every person has to cultivate their own walk with God. Enoch walked with God. Abraham walked with God. Different, you have different examples, these people that walked with God. But, but you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't live your Christian life on somebody else's experience. In other words, people are trying to get the same results of somebody else's experience by doing the formula that somebody said, oh, well, this is what I did. And faith is only a product of knowing God. Faith thrives in the rich, fertile soil of fellowship with God. I mean, faith comes by hearing, yes, hearing by the word, but, but also as you walk with God and you get to know God and you experience him, you're... you're uh, you get comfortable in his presence. Some people aren't comfortable in his presence, meaning taking time, being still. 
So you can't run with principle and neglect his presence. And what happens is people end up wanting the benefits of the kingdom without, without knowing or desiring the king. Two different things. They want, we want, in other words, people start, if they don't grow and they don't understand, God says, hey, look, you need time with me. It's going to benefit you. It's going to help you. You can't go through life without me. Uh, and yeah, you can, have, you, you can read all the literature. You can read your Bible. But I mean, that's, and that's a very important. I'm not, I'm not, not knocking that. But, but there's experience with God because, you, you know, you pray and you wait on him and you talk to him and you worship him. That's what we're talking about Sunday. It's important. Just worshiping God. All right? It's kind of like uh, we were talking a minute ago. The, Moses, I mean, we could talk about, I mean, Moses probably had one of the greatest Old Testament encounters, but, but that's not the pinnacle. The New Testament says the glory that we have in us is, I mean, it, it doesn't stop with what, but Moses did get to see God, the backside, and it was good. <laughs> the Lord, you know, but Moses understood there's more of God. Even in the beginning and what he did saw, the burning bush and God and then the miracles and going forth. And then, and then he gets to the point, he's like, Lord, I got to have more. You got it, Lord. Show me your glory. He understood there's more. And that's what happens when you begin to cultivate your walk with God and you have experience. You should. It's like I said, if you're not experiencing his joy, Sunday morning, I said, if you're not experiencing the joy, because that's the main thing that God's presence has. There's joy in his presence. Joy in our walk with God. And if you're not experiencing joy from Him, you're not doing it right. Some, you're missing out. You're, you're just, you you got to get back to that. And so, but then when you, begin to, when you begin to have that and you're pursuing God and you begin to grow, you realize there's more. I got to have more. And, but Moses also knew it's costly. There's a cost for it. And when you realize that, and, but Whatever you cost to gain more of God, you realize that was a small price to pay. <laughs> I mean, whatever God shows you, whatever it requires, whether it's a three-day fast or, or it's just taking time, deciding, I, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to take some time and I'm just going to spend some time worshiping God. Get, I'm just going to get to know God, hang out, you know. It just, those are just things that, that are, are, are important. And so what are we willing to sacrifice for his presence, to, to see his face, to experience his countenance? Um, that becomes real important for our lives. So you can say it like this, you see more uh, when you're less distracted. And the enemy is the master of distraction. So he wants to, you know, the enemy, if I can just keep them all busy, keep them too busy, but we're called to fellowship, all right? Let me give you a few scriptures um, because... Uh, God made a move. It's our, our part. Psalm, I, I really like Psalm 42. It's one of my favorite psalms. I, I, I look at it a lot because there's one particular verse, verse 8, that uh, I really like. But look at verse 1. This is, this is where David said, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. That means uh, he wasn't just talking about a spirit connection. We know they worship God, worship him in spirit and truth. But, but there's something about... Your emotional connection with God, because you, you have an experience with him, you're, you know, there's a transformation that takes place. And David said, my soul pants for you, O oh God. I mean, there's a, uh, I got to have more. There, there's a, that's where the emotional, emotions are in the soul, where you said, man, I got, to, I, I got to have more of God. Then he said in verse 2, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I, I think a lot of Christians, and I'm just, I'm just talking, uh, just sharing my heart tonight, I think a lot of Christians... Their, their soul is so busy with other stuff. You know, our soul. Soul is the mind, will, and emotions. And our will, yielding our will to minister to the Lord, wait on the Lord, you know, take the word, meditate on the word, focus on God, just worship Him, praise Him, share our hearts, speak, you know, just minister to Him, talk to Him. Uh, learning, you know, and you learn. You learn communication, it's like with anything, but, but he said, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God, thirsty for God. I think we all need to be a place where, you know, we have a thirst for God. It's like, I, you know, this week, I'm like, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, guarded of what's on me right now, what he's doing, that I'm thirsty. I want more. 
and I don't, I don't, and I don't want anything leaving what I, what's happening. You know, I'm just, I just, I just, it's just a good thing. You say, what is it? It's just him. Amen. And all I can picture, all I can think that it related to is just his goodness. I'm so thankful. This experience, just his goodness that he wants, that he, he wants us to draw near. I mean, there's so many scriptures so we could talk about. But verse 5, look at verse 5. This is, listen to what he said. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Now notice, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Again, some translations actually will say presence. So notice, notice he said, so Sunday morning we talked a lot about worship. Notice the connection, what, what makes God become available. He said, I will praise him. Say, I will praise him. So when you need the help of heaven, what's a good thing to do? Praise him. <laughs> Draw near. Praise him. So he said, I will praise him for the help. Help. So that, in other words, when God's presence, when it, when it becomes something that I'm accessing, it's going to help me in more ways than one. It could be wisdom that comes from his presence. It could just actually be the anointing. It just could be the lifting that comes, the anointing that destroys the yoke. Because he's talking about a heaviness here. I'm, I'm downcast. I mean, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling mully grubs, buzzards flying, whatever, the quickest way to get out of that is start praising him. Why? Because you begin to focus on him. And then you want to take it a step further like we talked about Sunday. Man, just press on into worship. And then you just, you know, that's where the intimacy takes place. All right? So, but he, so he said... The help, the help of his countenance. Now, keep going. Verse 8, he says, yet the Lord will command his love and kindness in the daytime. I like this verse. And in the night, his song will be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. So notice, he's talking about something on the inside of you, a song on the inside of you, something that ministers to you that you minister back to God. Now, that's important because you need everybody. I don't, I'm not, it don't even have to be your own song, but everybody should have some music. You should have something. And if it ministers to your heart, you turn around and you just get that so full on the inside of you, and then you just minister it back to God, and it'll minister to you. And you just love God with it. If it ministers, if it touches your spirit, if it blesses your heart, then that's a good thing. That means there's something there in those words, in that phrase in that where you are, and it, it blesses you, and then you bless God back with it, and you worship him with it. That's where your connection's made. So he said, uh, in the night his song will be with me. I like that. And my prayer unto the God of my life. So again, there's such a, there's such a connection right there that he's the God of my life, not just, you know, Monday night, next month, whatever, but, but he's the God of my life. So, so that means that's a relationship a uh, 24-7 relationship, and God is commanding his loving kindness on you because, again, back up, his countenance, you got the help of his countenance. Remember, we just read numbers. When God's looking you full in the face, it's helping you, it's blessing you, peace on you, shining on you, gifting you. So his countenance is a good thing. His presence, that's what I want you to say. His presence, yes, it's like you say, when you get born again, you got his presence on the inside. You understand? And we are the temple of, of God, and then we begin to grow. But it's like there's, there's other levels of the presence coming together. Two or three are gathered together. There's a presence, all right? Then there's just that anointing, that presence that comes in. It's like Sunday morning, man. It was just like sweet. Holy Ghost hot tubs, what I like to call it. It's just sweet. And uh, so look at verse 11 now. He says it again. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? In other words, when you start getting real quiet on the inside, uh, down, you, you got you to stir some things up. Hope in God. Notice, for I shall yet praise him. He, so he says it again. I'm going to praise him. Now notice this time, who is the health of my, count, my countenance. So one minute, his countenance is my help. Now, <clears throat> now, he flipped it here. Now, he's the health of my countenance. In other words, there's a healing taking place on my life, in my countenance, my attitude, and he says, the health of my countenance, my God. Yeah. Praise. Accessing his presence. 
worshiping him, looking to him. He's my God. I got a song. He gives me a song in the night, a prayer to the God of my life. Well, so when God gives you something, you can just sing it back to him. Just sing it. Just lift up a song to him. Amen. Again, it didn't have to be your own, something that ministers to you, and you sing it to him. You say, mm, I just bless the Lord back. Amen. Now, look, skip over to the 43rd chapter. Notice what he says here. Then, verse 4, then will I go unto the altar of God. So, again, the altar of God, that'd be somewhere where he's close by, right? I'll go to the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Who's the exceeding joy? God is the exceeding joy. Who's my exceeding joy? New pair of shoes? No. God is my exceeding joy. Who's my exceeding joy? New car? No. New TV? No. God is my exceeding joy. So if you're avoiding your exceeding joy, that's problem number one. He is our exceeding joy in his presence, his fullness of joy, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So he says, I will go unto God, my exceeding joy. I'm going to the altar. I'm laying down. I'm, I'm just coming to the altar. I'm coming to where I'm, I'm focusing on God. I'm laying my life down to him. I'm focusing on him. He's my exceeding joy. I'm coming into his presence. All right? And yea, upon the harp will I pray. Notice again, praise again. Praise becomes real important. You might not have a heart, but you know what? You got, a, you, you, got, you got tone, and you can sing even in the key of off. You just make a joyful noise to the Lord, call him the rock of your salvation, your high tower, your refuge. He goes on to say, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The second time he says it, who is the health of of my countenance and my God. All right, so I want you to see that, again, he's talking about the presence of God, the countenance, hallelujah. Act, again, there are ways, there's simple ways that we just access God, and it's simply by focusing on him, turning our hearts to him, praising him, worshiping him, looking to him. You got the picture here? Now, let me just solidify that countenance, his presence. Let's go to the New Testament. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Anybody know what happened on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2? Well, if you back up to Joel, Joel prophesied. It was a prophecy of Joel in the last days. God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All right, and things that go along with that. So Peter's preaching after the outpouring here, verse 25, for time's sake, well, verse 25, for David speaks concerning him, he said, I foresaw, he's actually uh, quoting some of Psalm 16 that we looked at Sunday morning. He said, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. Notice, David, he's referring to what David said, I foresaw, or remember Psalm 16 says, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. So here he says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand. Everybody say, he's on my right hand. Hallelujah. That I should not be moved. Verse 26, therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. How many know your tongue is connected to your heart? That's why if there's doubt, if there's sadness, sorrow, yada, 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 it's going to come out. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, when your heart is glad, what happens? Your tongue rejoices, all right? Or your, or your heart rejoices and your tongue is glad. That means you got a happy tongue. <laughs> I mean, I have a happy tongue. Amen. Happy tongue, right? <laughs> Moreover, also my flesh, notice, my flesh shall rest in hope. That's called healthy flesh. My flesh is resting in hope. Have an expectation. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Verse 28. Of course, that's prophetic right there, talking about Jesus. Because God didn't leave him. You know, he went down, but he didn't stay there. Third day, God raised him up. But then notice, verse 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Psalm 16 talks about, calls it the path of life, the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with your countenance. It's presence. You make me full of joy. So he's actually quoting Psalm 16 there that we talked about Sunday morning, his presence. So notice, if you'll, if you'll uh, in other words, if you haven't hit the joy part yet, maybe you're not staying long enough. <laughs> you know, keep, keep drawing from the well. Keep, keep dipping till, till you hit joy. That's what Paul said to do, be filled, singing. 
Make a meal in your heart to the Lord. So just keep drawing, keep dipping till you, you know, you decide, okay, it's bubbling up. I got, I got something, bu- it's bubbling up here. All right? So he said, he'll make me full of joy. I like that. Now, Psalm 16, in his presence is fullness of joy. But he says here in his presence, he will make me full of joy with his presence. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. Now, uh, I won't take time to go back and read Psalm 16, verse 8. But if you were 8 through 11, those are those same verses. I've set the Lord continually before me because he is my right hand. I will not be shaken. All right, therefore, my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. I like, instead of, he, notice he said, instead of my tongue, he said, my glory rejoices. All right? And then he said, my flesh shall rest in hope. Thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Now, Here's what I was thinking about looking at this. I think what you see in him, people are going to see in you. You know, if you look at him long enough, I mean, it's got his, his presence, his, his, what we see of him actually works in us. And I was thinking about Psalm 34. Well, did, I don't think, did, I, did I put that in here? Uh, remember uh, Psalm 34, I think it's verse 5. It says, they looked to him and became radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. So what you see in him... People are going to see on you. They looked to him and became radiant. We used to say years ago, going places, changing faces. That was our little church on the go before we changed our name. Amen. But we say, going places, changing faces. And we always, I'd always quote that verse. They looked to him and became radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Well, again, because what, what, makes, our, what makes our countenance change? Because we're looking at his countenance. His countenance has to do with his presence. And, and his countenance is good. His countenance is life. All right? Now, Psalm 27, verse 8, says, When thou said, Seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. So we're talking about his face have to do, having to do with his presence. All right? How many of you have had times where you said, Lord, I, I really feel like you're telling me to draw near? Press in, seek, seek him. You know, there's just times you're like, man, you know, I'm feeling a little behind. I need to press in and, and, and just get some Jesus time, God time, whatever you want to call it, Holy Spirit time, uh, where, where you need to wait on him, press in. But, but the, more you, the more you do it, you're going to have, uh, what I'm saying is the more you will actually begin to purpose in your heart to seek him, you're going to have encounters with him. The more you press in, you... Make sacrifices, whatever it takes to, to seek him, you are going to have, he's going to make sure you have moments with him that you never forget. Now, how many of you had some moments that you know of, you know, I mean, if somebody says, uh, I mean, you, you know God is real because you know him. Remember, Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. Now, think about this, because I, I, I had this written down, but I didn't mention it. I just had the scripture reference. John 17, 3, Jesus said, this is eternal life that we might know him. So knowing him is part of what we're talking about. Yeah. Knowing him, experiencing him, and as you, I mean, that's what Christ, the Christian life is not just, it's experience, you know? And if you've had experience over the person that hasn't, then you got experience. You, you, you know what you're talking about. Why? Because you've had experience. The, the one who hasn't had the experience is at the mercy of the one who's had the experience. But you don't build, you don't, when you've had the experience, you don't build your life on it other than you, you know it's real and, and you know there's more. So you press on. But, but God wants us to experience him. That's really kind of what's big in me right now. He wants us to experience him. But he doesn't, it's almost like he doesn't, he doesn't make it happen. We have to, we have to press in. Um, and, and he will only reveal himself to the degree that, that we are, can handle it. I mean, there's some, I mean, there's just, I think there's some things that we can only handle, we can only receive what we can receive. And many times it's because of how we're growing, where we're at, that we can actually experience God in a new place. If we're growing. If we're changing, if we're yielding, 
We're submitted. Again, to the degree that we are submitted and yielded to him, he can move. He can reveal himself. He can show himself strong. Remember, he says the eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro out there seeking who he can show himself strong to. Well, he's looking. He's looking for worshipers. He seeks after worshipers, so it must be rare to find them. Or he wouldn't say he's seeking after worshipers. All right? Psalm 105 verse 4 says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. So again, when we're talking about what is the face of God, well, I'm coming, I'm coming to that a little bit more here. How about 1 Chronicles 16, 11? Most people know this verse. 1 Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord and uh, not, not uh, well, that's, I'm, I'm coming to 2 Chronicles, sorry. 1 Chronicles 16, 11 is seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually, and then 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and my people, who are what? Called by my name. Called by my name. To humble themselves and pray. Now notice. So what's involved here? Humbling ourselves, praying, and seeking his what? His face. Well, what does that mean? Seeking his face. Well, it's exactly what the psalmist said. Lord, I'm going to seek your face. His presence. Coming in close enough to get some experience with him. Now, again, we're not chasing after an experience. We're coming after God. We believe he is. He's a rewarder of those who seek him. So he says, seek my face, and if they'll turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal heal their land. That's how important that is. That's how important the presence of God is. His face. Now, Ezekiel, just make a note, I've got it up on the screen for you. Ezekiel 39, verse 29, says neither, now this is going to go with really Acts chapter 2, the outpouring. Ezekiel 39, 29 says, Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit. Now notice, I want you to see this. Neither will I hide my face, neither will I hide my face, neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. So, okay, now we're starting to get a little glimpse of what the face of God looks like. It's the outpouring. This is Joel's prophecy, and again, what Peter referred to in Acts 2, the outpouring, the manifestation of the outpouring of the Spirit. In other words, when God says, I'm going to pour out my Spirit, he's talking about, I'm going to show my face. And when God's Spirit pours out, what does fa- what is, what is his presence look like? Stuff happens. When God's presence is available, hearts get cracked. Lives get blessed. People have tears. We have, we're in the presence of God. People cry. Uh, he, bodies get healed. Miracles take place. That's revival. I mean, when the presence, I mean, that's rain. I mean, the Bible says pray for the rain. Man, we got to make sure we're praying. The rain is the rain of God's presence. I'm coming to something here. So he's referring to his face, or you could say the rain connection. In the last days, I'll pour out. What's God waiting on? The latter rain. James 5, the husband waits patiently for the precious fruit of the earth until he received the early and the latter rain. Acts, or Act, Acts was early rain. We're in the latter rain right now, latter rain. And there's some great verses. There, there's some great verses. I think they're, 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 uh, they're more for right at, millennia, right at the end. The Bible, I'll give you a couple there's, that talk about latter days. But, uh, but, but this, when he's talking about God saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal my face and there's a connection with, with the outpouring of God. We understand that's the presence of God. God's like, man, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm, I'm willing. I'm, I'm doing it. The Holy Spirit's involved. This is about living with the continual influence of God. We're living with the continual influence. God's, God's working on us. He's in us. And his face is uh, really, you can say it like this, his face is still in the cloud. The rain, whatever you want to call it, his presence, the tabernacle of his presence, all right? So when God's presence is in manifestation, again, things are going to happen. So we, we want his presence. We want to pursue his presence. We want to come into this place, come in this house, expecting him to show up. I enjoy seeing the results of God's presence on the lives of people. I enjoyed Sunday morning. I enjoy seeing, I, I enjoy hearing that fella tell me, that young, young guy, college-age guy, is going, man, I felt like God cracked my heart open. 
I was like, yes, that's what it's all about. Because, you know, God is making himself known. He's making himself real. Man, I, I, we got to have that, right? That, these are the days that we're in. But again, here's the key. Because people don't know what his face looks like, they, reject, they can end up rejecting the move of God. In other words, God starts moving. God, something, man, whoo, this is happening. They go, people get afraid. Oh, well, that's kind of weird. No, 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 that's the face of God. That's what it looks like when God, when God, when God gets ready to manifest, when, his, when he shows up in his countenance, his presence, stuff's going to happen. And it may look a little strange. It might look a little bit weird. Brother Hagin said, I'd rather have a little wildfire than no fire. When it comes to the move of God, the presence of God, I'd rather have a little wildfire. So, I mean, we might as well just, you know, just don't worry about it. Amen? Think about it. Jesus demonstrated the face of the Father, right? And the, his people rejected him. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And a lot of them said, we don't want it. So, let me give you a couple more verses and we'll close. Uh, I like this because this is, this is about the favor. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get some more of this later. Um, in uh, Proverbs 16, verse 15, I like this verse. It says, in the, light, in the light of the king's countenance is life. Well, we know John 1 says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. So in the light of the king's countenance, in the light of the king's presence is life. And now watch this now. His favor is as the cloud of the latter rain. Woo! Did you catch that? His favor is like the cloud of the latter rain. His favor. <laughs> Everybody say the cloud. Man. The cloud of his goodness. The cloud of his presence. So let me say it like this. God's presence is on our life to give us favor. So if you're aware of his presence, accessing his presence... The purpose for his presence is so you walk in favor, peace, joy. When we recognize the place of favor, when you recognize it, guess what? It's time to ask. I'm not talking about for a TV. <laughs> Remember, God said, ask of me concerning the nations. I mean, let's ask big here. Let's, let's kind of broaden our asking uh, faculties here, all right? I said, when you recognize his presence is on us, we recognize the place of favor, God's presence, and you're accessing that, then it's time to ask. Let me give you two more verses. Uh, actually, Hosea 6, verse 3, says, Then shall we know... If we follow on, or one translation says, press on to know the Lord. How many of you got to press on to know the Lord? Press on. I'm going to say press on. Press on, follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain. How does God show up? Why are we saying, Lord, let it rain, let it rain, open the flood. Let it, why? Because we associate, we understand, we have enough Understanding that rain means the presence of God. We want the presence of God. We want the rain of God. Ladder rain, let it rain, pray for the rain. We're called to pray for the rain. Look, Zechariah 10 1 says, Ask of the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. So again, that should be a regular part of our prayer life. But he said, He shall come to us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. So when he comes, when he comes, when God shows up, stuff happens. So we want him to come. We welcome him. We want him in our life. We want him, we, we want to guard the fact that, man, when, really, I was thinking about, we're, we become carriers of his presence. We're carriers of his favor. I may have had that in my notes somewhere and just missed it. Yeah, here it is. I had it right here. I just ran by it. God's presence on our life to give us favor, and we're carriers of his favor. All right? There's life in his presence. It's like the rain. All right? One last verse. You remember... Uh, and here's, we'll close here. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit. This is the Amplified. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage, freedom. That sounds good already, doesn't it? And all of us, now notice, with unveiled face. What does that mean? That means our face is not veiled to where we can't actually see his face, 
that we can experience his face. We, we with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, because we, can, because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Hallelujah. So that's important because our, now the veil is gone in Christ. Man, we can, we, we, can, we can press in to know God, experience him. God wants us to experience him. Amen. And so I believe the Lord's about to reveal a measure of his goodness that, that we've never known. I think, I think even in, when we're talking about God's presence, things that he wants, because it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Let me give you this latter days verse. I have this just, the reference, I don't have it up on the screen. Um, Hosea, if you want to make note of it, listen to this. Hosea chapter 3, verse 5. It says, afterward, the sons of Israel will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. Now listen, and they will come trembling to the Lord and to his goodness in the last days. Hosea 3, 5. Catch that last part. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his goodness in the last days. There are several verses kind of like that, but that one, boy, that one really kind of just sums it all up. They will come to his goodness What makes people begin it? His goodness in the last days. We're in the last days, so I think we get in on it. So I'm convinced that I believe that that we're going to experience greater, right up here, greater measures of the goodness of God. So we should be looking for it. We should be calling for it. Remember, we were talking about contending for some things. We should say, Lord, we're expecting some more goodness because that's who you are. Amen. Did you get something out of that tonight? Well, I just encourage you to, to press on in, and God wants us to come. Let's stand up. Let's just thank him. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We thank you, hallelujah, for the wonderful privilege that we have to know you. We can know you in greater measures, experiencing you in greater depths of your love, your compassion, your goodness. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's just lift our hands and thank him. Hallelujah. Just worship him a minute. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you. Just guard that fellowship. Don't take it for granted. Don't take that fellowship, that that access that we have for granted. Hallelujah. But with boldness. Enter into the most holy place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're Jesus, our forerunner. We're Jesus entered in for us. Shed his blood. Placed it on the mercy seat. Woo! Now we can access that mercy. Glory. Because of the blood. Hallelujah. Access his very presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for revealing. Manifesting. You said... Hallelujah, because we love you and obey you. You would manifest yourself to us. Manifest yourself to us. Thank you. Abide on the inside of us. Thank you for the reality, Lord, of your abiding presence. A greater consciousness, a greater awareness that you are so uh, mighty in us. And upon us, Lord, that we just, we're aware We are aware, and we're just walking with you, walking with you, walking by faith, trusting you, experiencing you, experiencing your goodness. Hallelujah. That your goodness has overtaken us, Lord. Thank you, 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 thank you, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Well, you glad you came tonight?
Praise the Lord. Well, these are things that we're just talking about. We get to, we can just take it, take it, do it. Don't just hear it as a message, but do it, implement it the best that you can do. App, apply it as soon as possible. Amen. At night, in the morning, at lunchtime, noontime, when the sun goes down. Amen. Walk with God. Amen. That's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a reality. And he's real, and he's good, and he will, uh, he will be good to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, before you go, I think they got uh, nachos or something they got in the cafe. Got nachos in the cafe. So if you want to go out there and fellowship before you head home tonight, uh, love you guys. Bless you. Invite somebody Sunday morning. We'll see you Sunday morning. It's going to be a great day. Bless everybody.